Today we are continuing with chapters 3 and 4 of The Polar Bear's Past Bedtime. Chapter 3. Musk. Did you come with the wolves? Asked Danny. The seal hunter looked puzzled. Did Morgan see you? send you to us? Said Jack. I have a dream, the man said. You were in it. You needed help. Annie smiled. Morgan sends dreams sometimes, she said. We came in Morgan's treehouse. It flies through time. Oh, brother, thought Jack. Who will believe that? The seal hunter smiled as if he was not surprised at all. We do need help, said Jack. We're freezing. The seal hunter nodded. Then he left the window. He returned a moment later with two small parkas like his own. They were made of very dark skins with fur-trimmed hoods. He passed one to Jack and one to Annie. Thanks, said Jack and Annie. They put the parkas on. Hooray, said Annie. It's warm. Yeah, said Jack. They're made of seal skin. Poor seals, said Annie. Don't think about it, said Jack. He put his hood up. His head and upper body were very snug now. Only his legs, hands, and feet were still freezing. Oh, thanks, said Annie. Jack looked up. The seal hunter was giving Annie a pair of fur pants. Then he handed a pair to Jack. Thanks, said Jack. He quickly pulled the pants over his pajamas. Next, the seal hunter gave each of them a pair of fur boots and mittens. Jack took off his sneakers and put on the boots. He wiggled his frozen fingers into the warm mittens. I have a quick question, Jack said to the seal hunter. Do you know the answer to this riddle? He opened his notebook and read, I cover what is real and hide what's true, but sometimes I bring out the courage in you. What am I? The seal hunter shook his head. Come, he said to Jack and Annie. Then he disappeared from the window. What about those wolves out there, Jack called. But the seal hunter didn't answer. Jack grabbed the Arctic book and looked for a picture of the seal hunter. When Jack found the picture, he smiled. The seal hunter was standing beside a dog sled. Jack read. In cold weather, the seal hunter travels by dog sled. Siberian huskies often howl like wolves. A lead dog controls the others. The sled runners are sometimes made of frozen fish rolled up in sealskin. Hey, Annie, they're not wolves, said Jack. There, he looked up. Annie was gone. Jack threw the book and notebook into his back. But he was as, it was so fat in his furry clothes that the backpack wouldn't fit. Jack loosened the sh shoulder straps and tried to put the backpack on again. It fit. Jack looked at the small window that would be too tight to fit, too. He went out head first and barely squeezed through. Jack fell into the snowy ground. The snow was still drifting down. The air was misty white. Jack heard barking and howling. He moved carefully towards the noise. At first, he couldn't see the dog sled, but when he got closer, he counted nine Siberian Huskies. They had thick fur, big heads, and big pointy ears. The lead dog barked at him. Jack stopped. He's telling you to climb on, said Annie. She was standing on the back of the sled. The seal hunter stood next to her in the snow. Jack jumped onto the sled next to Annie. The seal hunter cracked a long whip. Mush, he shouted. The huskies dashed off in a whirl of snow. Above them flew the snowy owl. Chapter 4 Snow House The dog sled slimmed slightly over the frozen tundra. The seal hunter ran alongside it. Sometimes he cracked his whip against the ice. The snowdrift looked like giant white sculptures as the sun swept behind the frozen hills. Then, a full orange moon rose in the sky. 
The moonlight lit a small, rounded igloo in front of them. The dog slowed, then stopped. Want to see it? Jack stepped off the sled. Annie went to help him unhitch the dogs. Jack took his book out and read about igloos. The word igloo means house in the language of the native Arctic people. The house is built with blocks of snow. Dry snow is good wall material because it keeps in the heat. The temperature inside an igloo can be 65 degrees warmer than the temperature outside. Jack took out his notebook. He pulled off his mittens just long enough to write, Igloo means house. Come on, Jack, said Annie. She and the seal hunter were waiting for him in the front of the igloo. The dogs were leashed together outside. Jack hurried to join them. The hunter pushed aside animal skins covering the entrance. Then they stepped inside. A fat candle burned brightly. Shadows danced on the walls of ice and snow. Jack and Annie sat on a fur-covered platform. They watched as the seal hunter moved about. First, he lit a small stove. Then, he slipped outside. He came back with a snowball and chunks of frozen meat. He put the snowball in a pot over the stove. Then he added the meat. What's he making? asked Annie. Jack pulled out his book and found a picture of the hunter cooking. He and Annie read the words slightly. There was a time when nearly all the Arctic food was, and clothing and tools came from the Arctic animals, especially the seal. Nearly every part of the seal could be eaten. Lamps were fueled with seal fat, clothing was made from seal skin, and knives and needles were carved from seal bone. He must be boiling seal meat, said Jack. The poor seal, said Annie. The hunter looked up. They are not poor, he said. They help us because... They know they would die without them. We would die without them. Oh, said Annie. In return, we always thank the animal spirits, said the seal hunter. How do you do that, said Jack. We have many special ceremonies, said the seal hunter. He reached under the full-coated platform and took out two wooden masks. Soon there would be a ceremony to honor the spirits of the polar bear, he said. I carved these masks for the ceremony. Polar bears, said Annie. Yes, said the hunter. Just as the seals have given us many gifts, so has the polar bears. Like what, said Jack? Long ago, the polar bears taught us how to live in the ice and snow, said the seal hunters. Taught you, said Jack. I mean, can you give us some facts? The seal hunter smiled. Yes, he said. A polar bear catches a seal when the seal comes up to breathe through a hole in the ice. The oldest seal hunters watched the polar bears and learned. This is how my father taught me how to seal hunt, and his father taught him. That's a good fact, said Jack. The very first of my people learned to make igloos from polar bears, said the hunter. Polar bears built snow houses by digging caves in the drifts. Another good fact, said Jack. Sometimes the polar bears can even teach people to fly, said the seal hunter. That's an amazing fact said Annie. Jack smiled. The rest sounded like true facts, he said, but I know that to pretend. The hunter just laughed and turned back to his cooking. That's why he wasn't surprised. That's why he wasn't surprised to hear about the treehouse, said Jack. If he believes polar bears can fly, he believes anything. The seal hunter lifted the chunks of boiled meat seal out of his pot. He dropped them into a wooden bucket and gave it to Annie. Let's feed the dogs, he said. Oh boy, said Annie. She followed the hunter outside, swinging the bucket. Jack quickly threw his notebook and the Arctic book into his pack. He started to follow them. Then he gazed, fell on the two bear masks. He picked them up to get a better look. Each was carved in the shape of a polar bear's face. With a blunt nose and roundish ears. There were two holes for eyes and a strap to hold in, hold it to your head. Suddenly, Hal split the air. The dogs were barking and growling. Annie squealed. Are the dogs attacking her? Jack wondered. Annie! Still holding the bear mask. 
Jack charged out of the igloo. Well, that's the end of chapter three and four. Until next time.